Okay, small rant. I found a Momu plushie, and there's like a ton of them, and they're all slightly different hues. It's like they saw this color, and they couldn't agree on what hue it was, so nobody got it right. But I mean, look at this. We all know what color this is. Also, I never got around to talking about it, but I want to talk about these beautiful cover pages. Like, from chapter uh, 35 to 73, it's all about how Buggy reacts after Orange Town as they're on a boat being chased down and eventually meet up and team up with this uh, random pirate. Meanwhile, their crew just thinks Buggy is dead and they're fighting amongst one another to see who's going to be the next captain. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. I love that there is this sort of dual story that's going on while we're away from these characters. After taking down the big bads of East Blue that apparently the Navy had been struggling with, guess who's finally on the list of those threats? And not only does Luffy have an official bounty on him, and it's higher than everybody else's, but I love that all the other bounties look dead serious, and they're all angry and such, while Luffy is just smiling. We see the crew react to it, we see Hawkeye react to it, we see uh, Shanks and their crew react to it, and we see everyone in Windmill Village react to it. From what Shanks said, Luffy has finally entered. A solid hundred chapters in, and somehow we are barely finishing the prologue? It is such a power move to spend this time showcasing what an adventure would be like without even reaching the Grand Line! Which we still aren't there yet, by the way. <laughs> they got sidetracked at Logtown, the place where uh, Gold Rogers was born and executed. Which, I mean, this has to be a tourist attraction, right? Like, if the Age of Piracy is so popular, I just expect there to be a lot of tourism here. And there are a ton of people, but I think this is also one of the biggest places that we've seen so far, from a population standpoint, and also from an architectural standpoint. We don't have small houses or villages, but rather these multi-storied buildings. And everyone gets their own mini-adventures in Logtown. Zoro is purchasing swords after Hawkeye just decimated the ones that he had. Sanji's talking to merchants and buying fish. It just feels very calm. Like, for a bit, we are getting glimpses into the casual day-to-day -day activities that they'd be going on. We see Luffy visiting Gold Roger's execution stand. And that's when he comes across Buggy and apparently Lady Alvita, because that's Lady Alvita, apparently. And they both gang up to take down Luffy, which again, causes a lot of property damage. Wherever they go, they cause property damage. And they pin down Luffy at the exact same execution stand as Gold Roger was in to pull off the exact same execution here right in front of everyone, which again is a power move. Like, right in front of the Marine, they're just like, we don't care, we're still doing it. As Luffy is about to be executed in Logtown, we see what feels like divine intervention as lightning strikes and destroys the execution stand where Buggy and Alvita were planning on killing him. Even some of the people in the story are just in awe of that moment, like Captain Smoker seeing a glimpse of Rogers in Luffy from that smile on the execution stand. We cut to the mayor uh, from the Romance Dawn arc who was talking about whether this was a dream or destiny. We see a dragon guy, sorry I don't know their name, a dragon guy even stopped Smoker from capturing Luffy. Seeing it as a dream or a destiny that Luffy themselves must achieve. Even pushing them towards that journey as the crew just like gets on the going merry and escapes from Logtown. Oh, I know this arc was small, but there's a lot of stuff in here. Like this one was packed. For example, we see uh, two new fruits this arc. The one that turns you into smoke and the one that makes you uh, buttery. I don't know. It makes everything slip past you. And that's so interesting, by the way, that there's like a net or a stone or something that makes you unable to use your fruit abilities. So far, we have three pirates who have fruits, but I never thought about captains or the navy themselves eating one. But yep, that, that totally makes sense. 
I already mentioned this, but Ashank said Luffy has finally arrived and it feels like we are creating the best kind of buildup as Alvita is gearing up. We got Buggy who's ready to return to the Grand Line. We get Captain Smoker with her smoke fruit and Tashigi, which is another strong swordsman, all setting chase to the Grand Line. This is a beautiful hundred chapters of a prologue and you bet I am hooked. I'm also tired. I know I'm already reading anywhere from like 5 to 20 chapters a week, but I am reading a lot more than that, which is fine. I think it'll leave it out because I saw some arcs are like 50 chapters long, and I'm a slow reader, so I think it'll work out in the end. 